Hello, this is a hardware walkthrough of the Satnox version 0 0.1. Uh, we can see the Satnox version uh, 0.1 here. Uh, this is the one uh, that we got created uh, during the Space Apps, uh, the NASA Space Apps Challenge, uh, approximately around April. And then with some modifications um, that finished over May and June, uh, this is the working prototype of uh, the first Satnox iteration. We're currently working on a version 0.2, which uh, features uh, many overhauls uh, regarding the design of the uh, tracking system and some overhauls on the software side of the Satnox station. Uh, but um, basically what we can see here still holds the same, so uh, we're going to go through a, a walkthrough of all the basic subsystems. Um, so first off, in terms of power, uh, we do have the 12 volts uh, that are supplied through a um, commercial um, PSU. Um, and then we have a voltage regulator over here that splits up in uh, 12 volts and 5 volts uh, uh, the, the voltage uh, supply. For the 5 volts, uh, we're using them for power, uh, powering um, the TP-Link here, which is a router uh, which currently runs OpenWRT. Um, Linux-based distribution for routers. Um, and then um, this also supplies, again with 5 volts, the Arduino here, uh, which take care of the tracking. Um, now, um, this is what happens on the power side. Um, then the, all the system can be subdivided into two different subsystems. The one system is the, the, um, the one that we, we use for tracking. Um, so the way it goes is like this. Uh, we do have the TP-Link, uh, which works over Wi-Fi, so uh, you connect to it uh, with the software that actually controls uh, the whole Satnox platform. Um, and uh, then it issues commands through road control protocol uh, and communicates with the Arduino via EasyCom. Um, so we have all the information coming wirelessly into TP-Link. TP-Link feeds this information through USB to Arduino through serial EasyCom. Um, and then the Arduino uh, translates those alt altitude and azimuth um, um, uh, values um, to steps that need to be run by the stepper drivers, you, which you can see here and here. Um, and then directly from the stepper drivers to the stepper motors themselves. So this one is for the azimuth and the other one is for the altitude. Um, then the steppers are um, fixed into uh, a warm gear drive and then a, a, a gear um, uh, that is directly connected to its axis. Uh, and we can see here the, the azimuth uh, assembly and here is the altitude assembly, which is pretty much the same, you just rotate it by 90 degrees. So that, that's what happens uh, for the tracking part. And then the other major subsystem uh, is the, the one regarding receiving the signal. So once we have a satellite uh, which we track and we have all the commands uh, issued by the TP-Link to Arduino and then stepper drivers and then stepper motors, uh, then we basically point two antennas which you cannot see here, uh, supposed to be on this side and that side um, uh, of the main mast. Um, and once we have the antennas pointed to, uh, to the satellite, we're receiving in both VHF and UHF um, through two different uh, antennas. Um, and those are coming in uh, here, which are some um, fantastic DVBs, um, China-made, um, which are initially purposed to be used only for TV reception, uh, but through the proper driver uh, installation, uh, you can actually use them to, to track pretty much all the frequencies we need uh, from all the way down to something like uh, 10 or 20 megahertz uh, for all the way up to almost 2 gigahertz. So those are pretty, pretty uh, nice uh, receivers. And uh, here you can see only one, but imagine there is a second one here in the USB hub. Um, and we have the UHF and the HF. Um, and the reception is, uh, is made uh, using um, RTL FM uh, together with the decoding. And through RTL TCP, we, transfer, uh, we can transfer 
uh, this information back uh, to a server or a laptop or whatever else so we can uh, do the decoding there instead of doing the decoding here. Those are two options and this is just showcasing the modularity of the whole system. Like you can change parts around, use, reuse things that you already have, especially if you are an amateur, uh, a radio amateur or someone who tracks satellites uh, um, you know, quite easily and so you have the equipment. Um, so this is the, um, the main two subsystems. Keep in mind, as we said, we're working on a 0.2 version, 0 .2 version of Satnox, which will feature much more uh, stable uh, mechanical, um, pretty much a complete whole of the mechanical system, uh, which uh, also is going to be um, significantly, significantly smaller than the installation that we have here. So we can fit it in a slightly smaller box and have more rigidity uh, um, against the case. Uh, so we can uh, avoid any wobbliness or um, miss um, of the tracking basically. Um, and then uh, on the software side for the station itself, uh, we're working on a, um, a dedicated software uh, that actually will do the job of uh, you just supply the, the two line elements for the satellite um, and uh, through Python implementation of the eight, uh, SGP4, um, it translates those to actual altitude and azimuth values um, and then those values uh, get to be um, commanding actually the tracking part of the system. So um, stay tuned and uh, watch out for more updates on our Hackaday um, uh, project page. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you.